the story that you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts featuring characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. Just a quick sharing of my experience. When the tragedy of 9-11 happened, I can still vividly remember where I was. I was lying down in bed trying to sleep because I just got off the night shift. I was working for a lab at that time. I thought that I inadvertently switched the channel from news to an action movie. Then I realized that it was happening for real. I sat and watched and then turned the TV off because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And if you guys remember that particular day, then you'd know what I'm talking about. After a few days, we got a memo at work to be very vigilant with envelopes that arrive at that workplace because of anthrax. The letter may contain a white powdery substance. It became so scary that a co-worker from the microbiology department quit the same night. Anyway, the World Trade Center, Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and other locations in the United States were the targets of the worst terrorist attack in history on September 11, 2001. A few days later, on September 18, 2001, letters containing anthrax spores began to surface in different areas. Anthrax is a bacterial disease primarily found in livestock that can be used in a bioterrorist attack because their spores can be easily found in nature or produced in a lab and can last a long time. It can be released quietly and without anyone knowing because they are so small that we can't see, smell, nor taste them and can be placed into powders, sprays, food, and water without us knowing differently. The signs and symptoms of anthrax infection can vary depending on how you become infected but they can include skin lesions, vomiting, and shock. Anthrax that is inhaled is more difficult to cure and can even be lethal. Most anthrax infection can be cured with prompt antibiotic treatment. 22 people got the anthrax, 5 of whom died, and 17 became so sick as a result of the letters containing anthrax being mailed out. Anthrax in the air means people can inhale them, which is the most serious form, and can kill quickly if not treated immediately. The anthrax letter were not shipped in a single batch, but in two separate deliveries. The first set of anthrax letters had a Trenton, New Jersey postmark dated September 18, 2001, was presumably sent to a number of news organizations, including the New York Post, ABC, CBS, and NBC news stations. It was also sent to the National Enquirer and to American Media Incorporated, both of which were located in Boca Raton, Florida. Robert Stevens was the first person to die from anthrax. He was a reporter for The Sun, a tabloid published by American Media Incorporated. He went to the hospital on October 5 with shortness of breath and vomiting, and the emergency room doctor thought he might be suffering from meningitis. He eventually died of this condition, and when an infectious disease specialist looked at his spinal fluid under a microscope, he realized that it could be a different possibility which lab tests confirmed. On October 4, Stevens was diagnosed with inhalation anthrax. Not all the letters that may have contained anthrax were collected. The only letters that appeared to be retrieved from that time were those that were sent to NBC News and the New York Post. AMI, ABC, CBS, and other areas showed there was anthrax present. It was clearly obtained from a source which is thought to be the letters identical to those discovered at NBC and the New York Post. On October 9, three weeks after the first anthrax letters were received, two further anthrax letters were sent. Senators Patrick Leahy of Vermont and Tom Daschle of South Dakota received them. Daschle was the Senate Majority Leader at that time and Leahy was the Chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. On October 15, an aide, Grant Leslie, opened the Daschle letter and the government mail service was shut down. On November 16, the unopened Leahy letter was discovered in an impounded mailbag. The Leahy letter had been misdirected to the State Department mail annex in Sterling, Virginia because a zip code was misread. A postal worker there, David Hose, contracted inhalational anthrax. The anthrax attacks in the second wave were more powerful than the first. Initially, it was speculated that they could have been weaponized. However, this theory was quickly disproved once the powder was extensively analyzed. It was, however, 
A pure strain of anthrax with each envelope containing around 1 gram of highly refined powder consisting of nearly pure spores. Each of the anthrax envelopes mailed to the NBC and the New York Post included a letter. The letter that was sent to the recipient was a photocopy of a handwritten letter. Both of the letters ended with the words, Death to America, Death to Israel, Allah is Great, and both referred to the September 11 attacks. The letters T and A were sometimes highlighted or bolded in the notes that were sent. It's possible that there was a hidden message in it. The letters were considered to be linked to a hidden message containing the amino acids tyrosine, asparagine, and phenylalanine, though this was never verified. Some of the letters labeled F and Y were also thought to supposedly be a slander against New York City, where many of the letters were first sent. Eventually, a breakthrough was made, and a guy named Dr. Bruce Ivins was suspected of being the perpetrator. He had been trying to develop a more effective vaccine against anthrax. Ivins was hospitalized for depression and anxiety after being placed under a 24-hour monitoring and banned from the labs where he had spent the previous 30 years. In July 2008, he committed suicide by taking a deadly quantity of acetaminophen or Tylenol. An investigative summary was issued and the case was considered closed. Officials from the Department of Justice and the FBI reported a breakthrough in the investigation in August 2008, releasing records and evidence indicating that charges were about to be filed against Dr. Bruce Ivins who committed suicide before they could be filed. The Justice Department, the FBI, and the United States Postal Inspection Service finally ended the investigation into the 2001 anthrax attacks on February 19, 2010 and issued a 92-page investigative summary. The findings of the investigation, however, were later questioned by the National Academy of Sciences, which published a paper in 2011 concluding that while scientific evidence supports the theory that Ivins was the perpetrator, it does not prove it conclusively. Although the case of the anthrax letters is officially closed, many people still question if the perpetrator is still at large. The case may be open in the future if new evidence emerges. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say that I am incredibly grateful that you took time out of your schedule to listen to my narration. This is Naki of Twisted Mind, wishing you a great rest of your day. Salamat.